Welcome everybody to this very exciting, interesting lesson about what is an endocrine axis. And many people have trouble wrapping their heads around this at high school or college, so let's keep it simple. Endocrine refers to the fact that we're talking about hormones, and axis is a word that really can be substituted by path. If you don't like path, you can substitute it by road. If you don't like that, you can say route. But basically, I want you to keep in mind that we're talking about a one-way path down which the hormone system has to work. And the reason why this is so interesting is because the hormones can be as small as this dot I drew right there, but they're secreted, they're produced and, and, and let go in the bloodstream miles and miles away from where they have to work. So that sometimes they have to span distances a hundred or even a hundred thousand times their own size in order for them to do their job. It's amazing. The best way to understand an endocrine axis is draw a parallel with a relay team that we all know. Relay teams work with runners that have to go from, let's say, point A to B, then from B to C, and then from C to D, okay? So let's 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 talk about our example here we have the first runner the first hormone in blue and the runner has instructions in the relay team to go from point a to b to proceed to point b once they make it there they're holding the baton in their hand so they're going to exchange that with let's make a runner here in red with the runner that has to go from point b to c and that's the instructions that that hormone that runner has and so on and so forth. I have here my hormone C in yellow that has to go to D and over there it's going to meet the final runner in the relay or the final hormone in the system where it's going to be the end hormone that's going to work on your target tissue so everywhere that needs to act and it's going to that's the finish line okay. Let's make some more room here while we talk about three very important safety features that all endocrine axes have. And those features serve to protect the body from having too much of the final product, okay? The first thing is roadblocks. At any point down this path, it's a road. Remember, you can put a roadblock and things can move past that roadblock. I'm going to draw here between point B and point C. It doesn't have to be there. It doesn't have to be after the second step. It can be at the first step, second, third, or fourth, whatever, however many steps that the axes have. But in essence, you're trying to stop the system from working. The second safety feature is the fact that you can always send the hormones, quote unquote, the wrong way. So let's make an example here for our final product for hormone D, instead of reaching the finish line, you can send it somewhere where it doesn't have any idea where it's at, but the most important thing for as far as your body is concerned is that it doesn't make it to the finish line. And that can happen with the hormone in yellow, in red, or in blue, it doesn't matter. The last thing, the last very important safety feature that is perhaps the most important one is the feedback mechanism. And that's a mechanism by which the person that makes it all the way to the end, so the final hormone, once they're there, they start shouting and letting everybody know from the relay team that, hey guys, I made it, I'm here. And the most important people that you have to let know are the first people in the relay team. Because they're so far away from you, they can't see you making it to the finish line, so they have to hear you. If they don't hear you, they're going to keep running and they're going to keep trying to make the runners keep making it to the finish line so that you're going to end up with too many runners at the finish line, too many hormones at the finish line, which is something that you don't want. So in summary, A stimulates B, B stimulates C, then you make an end product, which is D, and D talks back to the first runners in the team. Now, let's make a little pause here and underline the fact that some hormone systems are shorter so they just have for example a and b some hormone systems are longer so they go down to e and f okay let's put this now in context of human anatomy for most not all but for most hormone systems the a part is secreted is made from the hypothalamus hypo is greek for under thalamus is greek for room so it's sort of like the under room of the brain it's the basement of the brain. If you think of your own house, if you have a basement, this is where all the mechanical components of the house are usually. So like your boiler, your AC unit, that's sort of like the engineering part of the brain. 
The B in the human anatomy is a very important gland called the pituitary gland. It's a tiny pea-sized gland, but it's so important because it acts to it serves as the maestro of the hormone orchestra. An orchestra has dozens and dozens of musical instruments and you need someone to control everything. So that's what the pituitary gland does. For every hormone axis, pretty much everything goes through the pituitary gland. It's very, very, very important. And the last parts in the axis, so the C part and the D part, are usually the glands where the hormones are produced themselves. So uh, C will be the gland and D will be the hormones that are produced from that gland. So let's make things even more concrete now and take an example of one of these axes. So we're going to talk about the thyroid gland. It all starts from the hypothalamus and at, over there in this axis the first hormone that is produced is called TRH. T is thyrotropic means feeds the thyroid. RH is releasing hormone. That goes to the anterior pituitary gland and makes the gland produce TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. As the name suggests, that goes down to the thyroid gland itself. And from there, you have production of thyroid hormone. That's the one now that feeds back to the first A and B hormones, TRH and TSH, to let them know that, guys, I'm here. You made me go to the end. You can stop stimulating the thyroid gland now. Thank you for listening.